Hello guys, my name is Ryan Felton. Uh, I'm going to do a presentation today on a plugin I ran across this week. Um, I'm actually just kind of doing Ruby on Rails on the side, just playing around with it. Um, in fact, uh, that star rating looks very familiar on the Tune Shelf program. <laughs> So I'm just kind of doing this on the side with a friend of mine actually in Atlanta, and he was the one that actually ran across this simple sidebar plugin. Um, basically, we had run across all kinds of problems because we wanted each page to have its distinct sidebar based on the content that was presented on that page. So we ended up having to create multiple default layouts with different parts in that uh in the sidebar. So we knew there had to be something better and we came across this and it was it was perfect. Um, installation, it's super simple. Here's the, uh, it's actually hosted up on Google Code for the SVN. We just run the script plugin install. It downloads just a handful of files and uh, there's no migration for it. So the first part is to create your partials. Um, that you're going to have in the sidebar. As you see, we probably have close to 15 or so different little, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say widgets because they're not, what's that? Panels, there you go. Panels is an excellent one. Just little pieces that will fit on that sidebar that we use. The next step is to go ahead and add it to your controller. So you'll notice um, right there it says sidebar and then login unless logged in. Basically, that's saying add to the sidebar the login control unless the person's logged in. If they are logged in, you notice that next line is the welcome. Um, this is numbered. The, the order you put it in is the order it will show up in the sidebar. One little caveat we've been having troubles with is the documentation says that you can do this in the application controller to affect all pages on your site, can't seem to get that work. So we've just been putting it in um, every controller where it's necessary. So for instance, every page we want to log in, every controller right now has a sidebar login. So if you, you're. So I actually have an action mm -hmm. in my application controller. So is the sidebar work all on the application It It ties it into the action based on the. Let me look into that further. It's based on like a specific controller that you tie it to. So like you don't have to have um, the login function within that controller. You just have to include the sidebar. So that's still separated. So it says in the documentation we can just put in the application and it will magically show up. So we just need to figure out what's not quite with ours to get it to work. But so you have your controller, say you have your account controller with your method login. In this case, that's what this partial, the login partial would call. It would call the account controller the login method. And then as far as actually displaying it on your page, you just simply call the render sidebars function. And this is the part that it really helped dry up our code. Um, we had most of our pages almost exactly identical in the uh, layouts folder. They all had the header. They all had the footer. They had the flash. And then they'd have this big chunk of sidebar stuff. And so we had to keep each one different. So in this case, we just entered this one, and as you can see, this we've eliminated all the sing every single layout that we had. Um, so basically, now we just have the partial for the header and the footer, and then we have the application.rhtml. Whereas before, we had to have one on each controller, so that we could distinct make distinct sidebars. So demo. 
Now, those of you who have seen this before, our project is called Obsidian Portal. It's uh, just essentially to get our feet wet. Uh, the design has not been the prettiest. In fact, actually, I can say website aisle 10. Just kind of pull up. Uh, here's the current home page for it. Not necessarily the prettiest thing in the world. But today I whipped up this layout real quick. Um, as you can see, the home page, this text is going to change greatly. I've just been working out the layout. But over here in the right-hand corner, you'll notice that right there is the, the uh, partial for the login. Next, you'll notice there's a partial for grabbing the most re recent updated campaigns. And then further down, there's another partial for grabbing the top rated campaigns. So, try something. Yeah. Sure. This is kind of a, our, a D and D campaign manager, character manager, item ma manager. Basically, um, I haven't played in years. I wish I had time to play again, but, uh, my friend in Atlanta has been qu playing quite a bit and, he, they've been playing, it actually works for any role playing game. We have probably about, I think, 30 different game systems in it. Um, basically, we notice that everybody is sitting there writing everything on pieces of paper. It's not searchable. You're not interacting with everybody else. The DM can write something down and have to come back to it, like, you know, a couple times later. So basically, we just, uh, decided to put a blog slash wiki campaign manager together. So I'll run through it real quick here. But I'll just finish up the presentation on the uh, sidebar. And so you notice that on the sidebar, I'm still on the same page. Well, actually, no, I was on the home page before. Um, the default page is to list the campaigns. But you'll notice on the sidebar, with that code that was shown right here, where unless logged in. So the second one, welcome if logged in, it just essentially gives the welcome partial for that one. So I can go ahead and go into some detail on some of the sub pages. We bring up one of the campaign's details. You'll notice on first on this page, it just has the welcome partial and the search. We're using Axis Solar for our search engine. If you go further into detail, you can see the sidebar again changes. It brings up the description of the campaign and the party members and also brings up an RSS feed. And then also, as you can see here, it has the wiki, which is basically gives an adventure log, you know, what happened, what's going on. Anybody can edit this. It's got a party wiki of just information you can put on it with sub pages it's got npc character tracking and you'll notice the uh fancy css star rating system on most of the pages that was my presentation last week for those of you, or last month um now i'm actually going to get to do something real quick Sure. Um, which part where how you add the partials to the I can actually just bring up the code. So um, this is slightly different here. You'll see still working on transitioning the whole thing. Um, standard layout is basically our application .html. But what you're probably most interested in is here the sidebars folder. Here's all the partials that are listed. So we'll go ahead and go to the login one. And essentially it's exactly like the login. The one thing that you have to make sure to do is add the controller and the action. Uh, a lot of times when you're creating this, you can just say form tag and name the action because your view is called by the same controller. 
because it's actually a separate controller, the sidebar controller that's calling this, you have to make sure to specify the account controller. Right, this is the HTML. So now to in well, this this is the partial, and then to insert that into the sidebar, that's actually done by the controller. So we'll go to our main controller, which houses our home page. And so you'll notice here it has the sidebar for the login and the welcome. How does this part right here? The, uh, yeah, okay. Right here, it, it calls the sidebars controller. So that sidebars controller knows to go out, look at this controller. So what it's doing, in this case, it would be calling the application dot control uh, dot application controller but since we don't have that working we have it calling the specific controller so in this case it would be the campaign controller well I'm sorry on the home page it would be our main controller okay so it goes to the main controller it finds the sidebar section it says present the sidebar with the login if they're logged in and then present it with the welcome if they're not logged in so then it knows to, that its views are within the sidebar folder. So you see here's, here, right here, within the views, there's a sidebar folder, and then there's the login RHTML. So it says, put that there. Does that make sense? Okay. Exactly. 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 That's partials are just little itty bitty pieces of HTML that you can throw up there. That is right here, the standard layout. It gets all of that, the sidebar, it gets entered into this whole part, the render sidebars. So where you have here in your controller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the font might be a little small. So here where it says sidebar login, that is where it knows to get displayed right here by calling this method. Mm -hmm. And then all the other HTML that we have is included in our header and in our footer. So it keeps this file real compact. Um, Password. I can't change that. Actually, actually set it up specifically so I can't change that password. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, I really want to show you this functionality. So. Hold on one second. There we go. Wow. Unlike everybody else, I don't like giving my passwords out on camera. <laughs> Have you changed them yet? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Question. I haven't. Uh, 
Right, right. You can place it wherever based on your CSS and all that other stuff. Yeah, it's it's you just change if you had one on your left, it would just change your CSS. As far as having multiple ones, I haven't gotten that far into it. Um, as as I said before, my friend uh, that I'm working with, Micah, put together quite the uh, extensive blog post on how he got it to work and everything. And pull up that. Um, but yeah, if anyone's interested, I can send out the uh, further information on this. Where Camp San Diego rock, by the way. Uh, no, this is just WordPress. So I don't have any Patrick in here. And I have a great picture. I have a great picture of you at our camp. <laughs> so, anyways, here's the the blog post on uh, on simple sidebar. It's pretty lengthy. Um, it's just at our blog i'll ten dot blog dot i'll ten dot com. Um, we try to uh, be very extensive. If we spend a lot of time working on somebody something like the CSS star rating, we make sure to get it out there and show to everyone. So I'll just go back to this. Um, so here I'm logged in as essentially the Dungeon Master. So two new uh, tabs have shown up. You got the Dungeon Master wiki. So if you actually are running a campaign, you have a space to write down a bunch of stuff. So say you have, you know, a, a city or something that's coming up that you don't want to give everybody else yet, or there's a secret about this character. So like here's an NPC. So you can go to your characters that you're tracking. And only the dungeon master has access to this. And at a later point, you can move them over to the public one so that everybody in your game can look at it. So. We're using uh, textile, plus we're doing, I think, a custom one. I didn't actually do that. And it's a little tricky. So if anybody has a Rails wiki plugin that they know of and like. I would definitely like to hear about it. Um, let's see here is just finalized demo. On a side note, um, when we put this on our blog, we submitted it to DZone and we got listed on Tuesday, I think about 11 a.m. and we had over, we were averaging like 20 or 30 people on our blog and then that first day on Tuesday, we had over 300, about 300. And then the second day, again, we had 175 people. So people, I think, it's a pretty popular website. Um, if you guys do write some pretty cool stuff in Ruby or Rails and you put it out there for everybody else, I, I suggest uh, putting it out there because it's real friendly towards the Rails and Ruby community. D-Zone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, those two websites have generated a ton of traffic to us. Yeah, it's just obsidianportal.com. Mm -hmm. So, any more questions? Show, show like the login partial sidebar thing. Mm -hmm. That one actually isn't um, really, it's on the main page, and that's the only place it's used. So, and we're still kind of transitioning. We just found this plugin. So we're transitioning all of our data. This basically is a big query to grab the top rated campaigns, and we have the newest users. And then you see right here within the plugin, it adds it to the sidebar right there. It's, yeah, yeah. So with these, it's all based on these other controllers, which are listed in the form. So, so here you'll see that the login, pull, 
points to the account and I'll log in and then welcome just grabs the current user that's logged in. Um, that's session based. Uh, let's see if but I if can. You wanted, if you wanted to have like the top five of anything, mm -hmm. and you wanted to recycle that over and over, mm -hmm. would you have to make that top five call inside each action? Yeah, I mean. You could you could throw it into a model. Um, so like. For instance, in this case, if you want to grab like different stuff, you just have to say select from, in this case, we're just doing campaigns. You'd have to grab it from your different. So it'd probably be something that is you'd put in your model. I've considered hacking at the Access Rateable plugin that we use to make a generic find the top X, um, top rated items, and submitting a patch to that. I haven't quite gotten there yet. It's 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 kind of the question throughout Rails is where do you put this? Do you make a crazy big find and put it in, you know, your model, your plugin, your controller? So you could really put it anywhere that you want. Engines. Right. Exactly. If you have like a, a protected method that's mm -hmm. called every time you hit that sidebar condition mm -hmm. so that you can set up your state for your top five. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that could be wrong. Yeah. But still, so so I'm not saying you could add that functionality to our feature set. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a matter where you want to throw it. Yeah. We'll just throw it here for right now because the only place we grab it is on the home page. It should be application that our HTML. If you have a recommendation on layouts, I'd love to hear it because. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Right. Right. And kind of prioritize it too, so that way it doesn't, if for some reason, which it shouldn't, it display more than one. Yeah, um, that actually was kind of an issue, when, especially when we had multiple layouts. Now that we're down to one layout, just the application that our HTML, it's not necessarily a huge issue, so, but it may be a better coding idea. Ambas, come on, go and try. That concludes this episode of the SD.RB podcast. See you next time.